when homeschooling, I think it's really easy to focus a lot on curriculum as well as like how well the kids are doing. But I have found that developing some really good personal habits has really helped my days go a lot smoother. And so that's what I'm gonna be sharing in today's video. Hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm a mom to four. I love to homeschool. I love to read good books. And I love to share both of those things on this channel. So if you also like those things, please consider subscribing. Okay, so today's video is gonna be a little more of a chatty video, maybe kind of a heart to heart where I just share a little bit more of what works for me. And specifically, I wanna talk about five different things that I am working on that help my homeschool day go smoother. And actually looking at my list, it looks like there are three habits that are more action-based and two habits that seem to be a bit more like attitude-based. So let's hop in with some of these action-based habits. First, go to bed early. So it depends on your personality type. I do really well if I go to bed early, mainly because I am a happier, more patient, less angry mom if I do that. I know if I'm tired, the next day I will be less capable of just handling the kids where they're at or just really being able to assess what's going on, if it's behavior issues, if it's school pushback. If I am well rested, I am much more able to handle that. I mean, I also think if you go to bed early, you're capable of waking up early, which isn't necessarily on my list of habits, but it kind of rolls into this first one. The ability to wake up early and potentially have some time to yourself, especially if you are a homeschool parent that is in those younger years. So you have school age kids, but you also have toddlers or babies, or you're about to have a baby. That stage is a challenging stage. And so if you're able to get up a little bit early and do a little self-care, be that reading your Bible, doing some yoga, going for a run, just drinking your coffee in silence, whatever you need, I know that will really help your day go better. So that's the first action habit. Second habit is something that has developed over time. Like I've realized that I wasn't doing this well and if I start prioritizing this, it works better. And that is to prioritize school during school hours. So try and set yourself a however loose time frame you want, but to have that be school time. So if you're anything like me, I tend to get distracted by things like household chores. So it's like I struggle to leave dishes in the sink, but I don't remember whose podcast I was listening to. I think it was Julie Bogart, where she was like, just leave it, leave it there and just be 100% present for your kids. One, it'll help the school day go quicker and it'll go smoother because you're not trying to balance back and forth. And that way you're not unconsciously feeling stressed out about all these things that you're not getting done. You have chosen to not do them. And I think that makes all the difference. I think if it's something that is on your shoulders, like, oh my gosh, I have this, and I have a pile of laundry, and I have this to do, and then it feels heavier. And in my case, then I'm more likely to be short with the kids or not understanding with them if they don't get their math concept or whatever it is. I just have less patience. And so I have found that when I do that, when I have told myself I'm not doing dishes until lunch break, that I could just pass right by them. But it had to be something I practiced, but it has been so helpful so helpful. So if you take anything from this video, I think this is probably the one that's been the most impactful for me is the second one of prioritizing school during school hours. Okay. Third action habit is to prep and plan. So this one seems obvious, but it's so helpful. So prep in the sense of like, get all your worksheets prepped out, get everything ripped out, get copies made ahead of time, get things laminated ahead of time, whatever it is that you need to do for the style of school you do, Get that done ahead of time, whatever you can. Whatever you can do ahead of time, get it done ahead of time, as well as planning. And I know people plan differently, but for me, I have found that if I have a plan for the week, so I never plan past a week, and then I make myself lists on kind of the day so I know what I'm planning on doing. So even with morning time, I have a plan. So sometimes I wanna pick out a specific person we're gonna talk about in our 50 Amazing Young People book. And so then I have it picked out already and I'm not like flipping through and being like, who should we, what, who should we read? Oh, this, this is good enough. Let's just read this. Instead of that, I just have it planned. And so then I have a page number. So when I get to Tuesday and my morning time schedule plan, I can see, oh, we're reading about Louis Armstrong or something like that. And it just works better. The reason I think, at least for me, is it eliminates decision fatigue. I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's really interesting. It's the idea that you only have so many decisions you can make in a day. 
And when you plan ahead with what you're planning for your homeschool, you kind of take away the need to decide in the moment. Even if it's small decisions, those small decisions all build on each other until the end of the day and you're just kind of exhausted. And so I have found that planning really helps eliminate decision fatigue. And then I could just be like, mindlessly almost, look at my list and be like, this is what we're doing. And then I just do it, check it off, and it feels better. And since it's only a short plan, I do this on Sundays, it's not like I get really far behind or anything like that. I don't feel the weight or stress of behind. I just have a list that I can follow without making a ton of decisions. I hope that makes sense. But it's been a habit that has been so helpful for me and for my mental state. And then, like I said, these last two are more attitude habits. And the first one is to have kind of a long-term perspective with your homeschool. I don't know if this will land with anybody, but for me, sometimes I get very wrapped up in the moment, like especially if you're doing something that is challenging for the kids, such as learning how to read or math. And sometimes it feels like, man, we're not making any progress. He's really not getting it. I'm doing a terrible job. I should just chuck this curriculum and get a different curriculum. But I think if I'm able to check myself and be like, okay, let's look back over the last three months or whatever. Have we made progress? Yes. And then to sometimes realize that I don't know exactly how fast things are supposed to happen. I don't really have proper expectations for my understanding of childhood development and learning to read and knowing that every kid is different. And so I feel like having that perspective that they will learn to read. And if they're a fast kid, that's great. If they're a slow kid, that's great too. It really doesn't matter. And in my case, as long as I'm consistent, and have a long-term perspective, I have a lot more love and a lot more patience in the process and I'm not frustrated or exasperated because I don't know what expectations are good in this situation, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So really having a long-term perspective helps me relax and it makes the process so much more fun, so much less anxious than I can sometimes find myself if I don't think ahead about these things. All right, fifth and last habit is another attitude habit. It's really the idea of putting relationships first. And I think for many of us, this is one of the big whys of why we homeschool, which I'm thinking of putting a video together about why I decided to homeschool. If anybody's interested, comment below, let me know. But I think a lot of us have like build stronger relationships with our kids. And then I think What's hard is you go to the day to day and you're equally mom and equally teacher. And sometimes it's just hard not to get sucked into the details or the minutia or the like curriculum or the speed of the curriculum or comparison to other people who are homeschooling. And we can sometimes lose that big why of like building relationships with our kids. And I think one of the big challenges homeschool parents or moms have in this situation is you are wearing both hats the mom hat as well as the teacher hat. And that can be challenging because as we know, our kids tend to be more emotionally available to us. I guess they, they tend to act out more because they're comfortable around us emotionally. And that's a wonderful thing. But in the school setting with their teacher, they might just do the work instead of push back, even if they maybe don't understand or don't feel comfortable. As when they're with mom and they're all comfortable, they can push back when they're not feeling like they understand. So in one way, you can get a better feel for maybe they're not understanding this is a behavior issue that's not really behavior driven as much as it's like insecurity driven. And so you can kind of put your mom hat on and handle that and support them emotionally in addition to trying to keep the teacher hat on and encourage them to persevere and get through this, whatever their current challenge is. So yes, it would be easier in some senses just to be teacher because a lot of times our kids respond differently to different authority figures such as teachers. They're not as emotionally comfortable with them, so they'll just do it. And some days that just sounds wonderful, but on the other hand, I'm glad that I get to be that emotional safe place for my kids. So I hope that made sense. But I think being able to step back and remember a lot of the whys we homeschool, and I'm assuming here, but I think I'm right, that most people have on their list to have a deeper and more meaningful relationship with your kids. So we may want that, but that involves some action and attitude adjustments on our part to really embrace that well, or at least I have to adjust my attitude sometimes to remember that is what I'm desiring. 
So I realize this is a little different of a video than I usually make. It's definitely more chatty. I have nothing to show you, but I hope that was helpful. I hope that you can embrace some of these habits and see how they can really enhance your homeschool day, make it smoother, make it more successful, make it feel more meaningful. And so yeah, I am currently trying to practice all of these habits. And please let me know down below if there's anything that you currently do that you find really helpful that helps your day out, or if any of these ideas really resonate with you and you wanna try them out. Please comment below, I'd love to get a conversation going on this kind of a topic because I really love this community and feeling like we can share these things and be in this homeschool gig together. So anyway, thank you for stopping by. And if you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel if you aren't already subscribed and if you like this kind of content. And that is what I have. So have a wonderful day and I will see you again in the next homeschooling video. All right, take care. Bye.